Hello and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today we are going to continue our Discord bot series uh, and do just a little bit of coding to make it functional. Uh, so today we are going to add a break timer for it so that we have we have a work timer and break timer and then it starts to actually resemble something that might be useful. So no special magic today, but if this is interesting for you, stick with me. This is also going to be very short and then we get like a almost full, fully featured uh, Pomodoro timer already. Uh, so let's get started with the code. This is where we have been left off. So, so last time I just wrote a few statements in our start and stop comments to safeguard us from, from the idea that user would be trying to run, start the timer multiple times or stop the timer multiple times. So we have kind of, uh, we have kind of written this so that uh, we are uh, in, in addition to the uh, Discord bot timers or uh, threads, we are always going to have at, uh, we are, this is always going to just run in one kind of extra thread, not multiple ones. So this is how we have modeled this. And again, we have reached a point where we could go to many directions. But in my case, I'm only, this is a servant for me, this bot. So I'm not really uh, coding this right now to support multiple users, as I explained last time. Okay, if you do, you would probably need to uh, figure out, uh, well, we have the timer concept here. So if you would like to support multiple users, all you would need to do is somehow have a separate timer concept for each user and, and then, um, well, then track them separately. Then you would need to design whether you have uh, like one thread that is taking care of all the timers or whether you have one thread for each timer. But at least for now, we are not going to go there. It gets a bit, bit heavier and it's not really direction that I'm interested in, in going right now, at least. Let me know if you would like to see me explore that. We can definitely do a deep dive to that end as well. Okay. But uh, there is something I want to fix right now. So we can start the timer. And if we do that, uh, we get this nice little delay. So as long as uh, the timer ticks are below max ticks value, uh, we sleep for one second and tick, tick, tick until we are done. Uh, then after that, if uh, timer really expired and wasn't stopped, we go to this uh, start your break mode. So what I like to do next in this session is to have a timer here as well. And again, we have a design decision to make. How will we reuse the timer? So I can think at least a few options for this. One option would be that uh, what if uh, what if we created like two timers here to uh, created the timer instance twice, so we would have start timer and stop timer, and uh, it's definitely possibility, uh, especially because we can set the separate uh, max ticks uh, number here. So how many seconds will the timer run? I'm still using this test number here. So we could definitely have something like uh, uh, work timer and uh, rest timer. That would be one option. But I'm not going to go through that route because it feels like for me like with the current needs that I have, it might get a little bit messy first, uh, r rather fast. So for example, what if I end up starting both timers at the same time? So I would actually rather uh, for now deal with just one timer. And uh, then to, to be able to pull that off, uh, we would probably need to move these max ticks uh, to other place. So it should not be when we create the timer, it should be something that we pass when, when we start the timer instead. So my design for now would be that we have a one timer and when I start, I, I simply give the max ticks and then I tick, tick, tick. And then when it's expired, I can reuse it for another case. So we could later take this uh, design a little bit deeper and we could also include in timer a state, whether it's work, work timer or, or stop timer. But again, not today. Today I try to do minimal change to, to kind of support this uh, uh, break timer so that it wouldn't get too ugly too fast at least. Okay. So we need to change this. And uh, since we have the test coverage going on, we need to first figure out the effects here. 
So we could of course keep the max ticks here, but actually I'm not interested in doing that. So uh, I, I want to, yeah, what I want to do is just change it so that I'm never going to give the max ticks here. Instead, when I start, I'm going to pass it in. So you can see a little bit of test driven development principle happening here again. And my, my uh, idea is that I'm changing the tests. We could actually first change the implementation a bit and have, the, have it fail then to measure and safeguard it. This is a little bit of matter of your taste, but I'm not very strict on, on TDD principles. Uh, it's up to you. I, I would say that as long as you are changing the tests along with the code and not waiting too long, you can start by changing tests or changing the implementation either way. I do want to know that my uh, code uh, will will fail if I'm well, well if my code is not right I do like to see that tests will fail I already of course see that my test is uh, not even uh, kind of compiling because um, I'm, I'm passing in unexpected keywords so test is already telling that something needs to change but I'm kind of shaping what I want to achieve how I want it to work from now on from today on I want the timer uh, to not take any parameters, but when I start the timer, I pass in the max ticks there. So it should be minimal change. Uh, it's useless for me to even run the tests because I can see that it wouldn't work. ID is already catching that fact. So uh, I'm next going to the timer and there's the init and there's the parameter. And nope, that's not how it's going to work. Then we have the start and I'm going to now make this mandatory so I'm not leaving any nice default values I think we have grown out of that already so somebody when they start the timer they need to pass in how many ticks or seconds it will be running I store it in my member variable and that's the way to init the max ticks and uh, then we init the timer status and uh, reset the self ticks as well and uh, I don't think I need to change this value in the other phases. I might at some point need to have max ticks exposed outside as well, but at least not. It's now it's not required. Okay, so looking okay. Let's do auto format. I, I don't actually have the auto format installed here, so let's install it. Auto format is nice, especially if your team has set it the same way. So then, then you can kind of make sure that it sits, sits nicely, follows whatever conventions you have set. I'm actually not happy with uh, one, one thing. I typically have two uh, empty spare, uh, lines between the functions, so I, I need to at some point adjust my settings. But doesn't really matter how you like to indent or, or clean up your code, as long as your team agrees so that there is no indentation wars that people are formatting differently each time they commit. That shouldn't be happening. But just uh, have some guidelines set up, agree with them uh, within the team and have everybody set up the formatting the same way, no matter what tool they are using. Okay. In my case, rather easy because right now I'm the only one coding, so I, I can be a dictator for the auto format uh, principles. Okay. Perhaps this is worth another topic later on as well. Yeah, let's go back to the test code and save it to see if errors seem to have gone away. And I seem to have a nice terminal here, so let's try to see how the timer is working. Uh, good thing that I, I, I ran the tests because timer test failed. So there's a start. One of the starts is missing the parameter right now. I'm not passing the max ticks value, and I think it's here. ID also caught it. So it seems like this has not been relevant earlier, but nevertheless, I should give something. You can see that we already have some parameters that we should safeguard a bit better. So perhaps we do that in an upcoming episode. But right now I can set max ticks to anything. It doesn't matter for the case of tests, but by the API, this value is required. So I have to put something here. Let's try to run my tests again. So you can see that I shaped my model a little bit test first, pretty much. So I changed the tests, changed the implementation. And now probably my Discord bot is broken a little bit. 
because every time I say somewhere start I now should actually pass the value if I again modify this save it I think the well ID should catch up and it, it did so it's figuring that this row is now broken I don't fortunately I don't have many places that would be starting the timer anyways uh, let's decide the max ticks here so let's say that our working period is now it should be 25 minutes or 40 minutes or something but for the sake of testing this I like to keep this rapid so I'm going to work for mini, mini sprints I'm going to work for 10 ticks meaning 10 seconds and then uh, now we have the capability to go here and do this uh, self timer start max ticks something else okay and then we can again do the similar thing but I again I'm going to go back and clean this up later right now I'm just figuring out the implementation it's not very pretty I don't actually like when I start seeing this indentation it's a hint for me that perhaps I could simplify this a little bit and that's definitely true here however I have uh, done my work and uh, now timer is expired meaning that it was not stopped it really ran run through all the way so now it's time to start break I will show that message we will start a new timer and then we will start actually ticking those seconds this is the same code as before and I actually copy pasted it it works exactly like this so this is a signal for me that perhaps a little bit refactoring might be in order however again perhaps we'll do that in another episode trying to keep this rather short so we are ticking away with that and uh, once we are done we again want to see if this is expired here you can see why, why this is getting a bit ugly so I'm uh, repeating exactly the same structures but I'm just right now trying to figure out if this is the way I want to go so if it expired I want to say that okay break over okay and uh, now we are theoretically starting to get minimal Pomodoro application functionality so we should have a timer for the work and timer for the break and it's not pretty yet but again I will first figure it out even with copy paste which is by the way very dangerous you easily uh, leave some bit uh, kind of unchanged uh, let's see if that happens with me today uh, but anyway as I said I want to first figure out if this is uh, the way I want to work with this I did a very rapid minimum kind of brainstorm sprint for me and now let's go back to discord side and try the bot out so I can do this start and now I'm not going to mess with it well well I could a little bit last time we did this safeguard so we are not going to st be starting multiple threads we only have that one thread started it's happy uh, after 10 seconds it, it stated for me that start your uh, time to start your break so let's try to relax a little bit it's only 10 seconds so okay break over back to work uh, you can probably see the next step here uh, if we wanted to take the Pomodoro timer further uh, I think next idea would be then to consider daily iterations and figure out if we want to have some structure for them so uh, do I typical Pomodoro would have these mini sprints mini breaks you repeat that few times and then you should probably have a longer break and and after that you can again start doing this same same kind of approach uh, I don't think it's essential for us we could uh, build a bit more state here but right now it's like manual work so so if I now want to break is over I want to start my work again I just do this so I can do that it depends on how strict you want to be with the breaks and how much you want to kind of guide the user but to be honest I'm not really trying to create the most awesome Pomodoro timer there is in this world uh, at least not yet I'm just uh, using this concept to go through some basic things about the bots so therefore this might not be the direction we are exploring next to give you some idea what I'm thinking that might be interesting ideas uh, perhaps we could uh, explore the asynchronous nature a bit more so uh, perhaps we could dive into asynchronous uh, uh, operations and try to figure out ways to test those and also try to figure out ways to break this 
in a same uh, in a little bit different structure that we would have separate asynchronous uh, background thread running stuff because that might actually be useful if you do some integration you might want to have a separate thread that keeps on polling some data source and provides that information for you so that's one option another topic i've been wanting to uh, cover for quite some time already would be uh, error and exception handling we haven't done any and i'm painfully aware that uh, the, the, this causes our bot to be a bit flawed <coughs> so we might be exploring that one in in upcoming episodes and uh, what else uh, there's also discord has these voice channels so i have been thinking those might be interesting topic and and uh, all refactoring is always interesting we could beautify the code a lot uh, that might also be possible but i'm thinking let's have you decide so so right now i'm not going to do this ahead of time i'm going to be waiting a little bit to see your comments so if you are saying that this series is crap and uh, teaching bad uh, practices and it's not worth anything for anybody then probably uh, we can wrap this up at about this point if you, if you have found worth in this series, leave me some feedback. Because if, if you find worth, I, I recently got feedback from somebody after seeing my like first episodes and they were saying that this is awesome, I just got my first bot running. And that's exactly what I'm looking for, showing you these short tics, uh, tips and tricks. So if you leave me feedback like that, you can be guaranteed that I will try to figure out to uh, ways to make more. But I will also appreciate any feedback, so if there is particular areas you would like to see me explore or dev explain, uh, let me know in the feedback section, because uh, that's a win for me and that's a win for you to create something that's relevant and interesting and useful. So let me know. If you see, see something that, uh, that kind of rocks here, let me know about that, because that gives me motivation to keep on doing this. So all that is much welcome. And as always, remember to click that like button if you like to encourage me, but don't have any specific message to leave. The like button is plenty enough. Uh, if I see those likes, I know that people are watching this and getting some value or entertainment or both. And that's kind of my purpose for this channel. So, yeah. I'm going to take a short pause at this point and uh, have you watch a few of these uh, few parts of the series and see what kind of feedback pop pops up and then I will pick things up and see where we are heading next. So leave me feedback, uh, click those buttons, keep me going, uh, have much fun with the coding, whatever you do, as, mo as long as you find enjoyment from the coding like I do, I think you are on the right track and then we are in this together. And uh, thanks for watching this one and see you in later episodes. Bye bye.